Section 14 of the Universal Religion Baha'ism Its Rise and Social Import This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater The Universal Religion Baha'ism its rise and social import by Hippolyte Dreyfus Barney Section 14 Baha'ism and the Individual Let us now examine the influence Baha'ism can have on the individual in his personal life. For it is only through individual progress that we can hope to see the accomplishment of the progress of societies first of all what will be the religious attitude of a bahai in order to reply fully to this question perhaps it would be necessary to examine successively what might be the religious conceptions of a christian mohammedan buddhist etc of a free thinker even when an adept of one of these different beliefs accepts bahaism but that would lead us to quite a series of theological digressions outside the restricted limits of this study it will suffice to state that each of these individuals penetrated by this broad spirit of tolerance which characterizes baha'u'llah's doctrine will see in it the contemporary form of the religious idea keeping as much of his original belief as will agree with his broadened conception he will take exact account of the place religion should fill in his life no longer having the observance of liturgical exercises to rouse his negligence or to satisfy his intimate aspirations he will understand that all the acts of his life should express his high conceptions of the divine and tend to realize it in himself action will become his prayer for the best way to make the infinite which is in us rise to the infinite which rules and surrounds us is to communicate with it and still more to work endeavouring to act in no way contrary to the physical and moral harmony of the universe bahaism in fact teaches us that far from seeking to renounce this world and to withdraw into a spiritual domain where all material preoccupations are entirely suppressed it is here below that we should develop so as to attain to a higher spiritual condition our subsequent growth depends on the way we have profited by the time passed on this earth and as on this material earth we are physical beings as well as spiritual ones it is by the appropriate use of all our faculties that we shall accomplish the perfecting of our soul the mistake of buddhists in their deceptive and depressing nirvana of mussulmans resigned to sterile fatalism of christians themselves in their contempt for the comforts of this world of all those in short that the hope of a happier future hinders from recognizing the beauties of the present is not to have seen what a wonderful instrument of spiritual progress this material world is thus we have created arbitrary distinctions instead of realizing that everything is divine that spirit and matter are only separated from one another by our inability to see simultaneously the two different aspects of one and the same thing and that by voluntarily depriving ourselves of quite a category of phenomena we but delay the progress of our development consequently if it is well to be able to repress the demands of certain of our instincts if it is sometimes useful in solitude 
to seek after conditions for the development of our mental and spiritual faculties it is dependent on our wish to place in a practical way in this very world we live in the strength thus acquired in the service of our own progress and that of our fellow creatures the mystic exaggerations of the yogis sufis or monks are alike fatal a solitary life and severe discipline do not meet god's approval the possessors of perception and knowledge should look unto the means which are conducive to joy and fragrance such practices come forth and proceed from the loins of superstition and the womb of fancy and are not worthy the people of knowledge deprive not yourself of that which is created for you note baha'u'llah words of paradise page fifty six End note. more recently in this same order of ideas abdul baha writing to a western believer showed him that baha'ism is a religion of healthy and joyful life a morality based on activity and not a dogma of contrition a sterile doctrine of renouncement we were made to be happy and not sad for joy not for sorrow happiness is life sadness is death spiritual happiness is eternal life it is a light that the night does not extinguish it is an honor that shame does not follow an existence which is not resolved into annihilation for happiness the worlds and contingent beings have been created to attain this happiness it goes without saying it is not sufficient to give satisfaction to the plenitude of one's desires man would too often risk being guided by his less noble instincts into whatever sphere his faculties tastes thoughts reason lead him he ought to be especially engrossed in placing his activity in the service of what is high and generous in his being and so contribute with all his might to the general harmony of the world that is the religious life which gives happiness not in the retreat of a hermitage but in the fruitful agitation of the world there is the life indicated to us by reason conscious of its place in the universe religion says baha'u'llah is the greatest instrument for the order of the world and the tranquillity of all existent beings and a little after he says the greatest gift and the highest blessing is wisdom it is the protector of existence and its support and helper wisdom is the messenger of the merciful one and the manifestation of the divine name the all-wise note baha'u'llah words of paradise pages forty nine and fifty one end note thus indicating that our legitimate aspirations towards that which some call the unknowable should always remain under the control of reason in short preventing man being led by his faith into a domain where his reason could no longer follow it end of section fourteen